The regular, regular monthly meeting, Thursday, March 23rd, 2017, is now called to order. I ask you to stand for a moment of silence. time, I'll call on the superintendent to introduce the student that will be doing the Pledge of Allegiance and the statement. Thank you, Chairman Parent. Good evening to everyone. Good, Good evening. evening. And thank you all for being with us this evening. At this time, I would like for Kayla and Lewis and Jarvian, Micah, Devon Peoples to come forward, along with the principal and assistant principal if they're present. And as they come, I will read some information on these students. Kayla is a sixth grade honor roll student at Brighton Elementary. Science, her favorite subject, fascinates her because it's ever changing. She is passionate about learning how to appreciate the environment and the things that live in it. Her hobbies include participating with the local steel drums organization taking karate lessons, and learning the techniques of sewing. Kayla is an active member of the American Miss Paget organization, an avid reader and gifted speaker. She has an ability to bring life to the stories she reads. Her dream is to become a world-renowned fashion designer or a member of a forensic division of the Federal Bureau of Investigations, FBI. She is the daughter of Kevin and Alicia Lewis. And if the parents and family are present, would you all please stand at this time? <laughs> Jarvian is a fourth grade honor roll student at Brighton Elementary School. He has a passion for mathematics because it enables him to add figures and solve mathematical problems. The light bulb goes off in his head when he's able to solve a complex math problem for which he has been trying to find a practical solution. When he is not in school, Jarvian enjoys playing football, reading a good book, and participating in various games with family members. For him, the most important time of the day is whenever he's engaged with his family. Like any young man of his age, he has aspirations of becoming a professional football player or a math teacher. He has not ruled out the possibility of making a positive contribution in some other field of mathematics. He is the son of Deidre Baskerville and Jesse Peoples, Jr. And if his parents and family members are present, would you all please stand at this time? Thank you very much. And these students are accompanied by their principal, Mr. Arcelius Brickhouse, and assistant principal, Ms. Kathy Mangum Parker. Kayla? We just have a very small token of appreciation for all that you do for Portsmouth schools and especially Brighton. That will be the Bumblebee boxes. Uh, just wanted to thank you again for all that you do. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Kayla Lewis. Please stand as I say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. <clears throat> Chairman Parent, Vice Chair Williams, school board members, Dr. Bracey, 
Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> good evening. Good evening. At Brighton Elementary School, student achievement is our number one priority. We are the proud home of the bumblebees. Our school's theme for the 2016-2017 school year is Working Together, We Finish Strong. Student-centered and student-driven on our race to the top. Our goal this year is to receive full accreditation. We believe that through hard work and perseverance, we can achieve our goal. Our team of hardworking teachers, support staff members, and administrators is committed to excellence while teaching the students. Brighton Elementary has several academic programs designed especially for the students. SOL intervention, in-school remediation, algebra readiness, ST, spatial temporal math, iReady online instruction, gifted and talented, PALS, and the Norfolk Naval Shipyards Community Outreach Tutorial Sessions. At our school, our parents play an important role in their children's education. Brian has an active PTA that supports school programs and provides funding to enable us to buy various materials. Our parents read to the classes, they are involved in career day, and they volunteer at the school. Brian's parents will continue to attend monthly parent meetings held in conjunction with parent tr training workshops. Brighton Elementary School believes in fostering good relationships with the community, including partnerships with businesses or organizations such as Portsmouth Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, Wesley Community Service Center, Norfolk Naval Shipyard, Rico Copiers, American Legion Post 190, and Retired Veterans Association. Approximately 20 businesses or organizations support our school. For that, we are extremely grateful. At Brighton, we recognize students in these areas. Perfect Attendance, Citizenship, Student of the Month, Honor Roll, Principal Stars, Nine Week Recognition, and Awards in Reading and Mathematics. Our staff honors included nine-week teacher recognition, principal's award, teacher of the year, and instructional assistant of the year. At Brighton Elementary, we believe that educating everyone takes everyone. Working together with the community, we know that we can achieve our goal of academic excellence. More importantly, we are prepared to finish this school year strong with earning full, full accreditation, accreditation status. Hey. Excellent. Thank you for your service and dedication. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Dad. Right. Yeah. Just very quickly, um, I'd just like to thank our faculty and staff. So if there's anyone here from Brighton, could you please stand at this time? Thank you again. Thank you. 
At this time, uh, Reverend Cordell Pertilio is will give our mission statement, please. It is on your pad. The mission of the Porson Public School Division is to gauge all students in learning that will foster academic excellence and responsible citizenship. Thank you, Reverend Patillo. At this time, we will have a progress report by transformation. Uh, Mrs. Lee, Brazil. And I think all board members have a copy of your report. They, have a copy. they do. Yes. They have a copy of your report. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, and good evening, Vice Chair Williams, and to the board members. It is um, my great pleasure to first share with you the quarterly report for the MWBE program. Uh, if you look at the chart on page three of seven, you'll notice that we are still doing an upward trend in our efforts to get MWBE contracts into the hands of people in our city. And we are now at 27%, which is a one point increase within just the last quarter. Wow. Very impressive, very impressive. Uh, the program is doing extremely well, and we are very pleased to see on page four that the utilization by each department has increased to 27.49%. For those of you who have been around a while, you'll know that when we first began, there was extremely low utilization by departments and schools. That was part of the culture change that the original board wanted to see that has been accomplished. So I think you can be very proud of this and share it with your constituents all over the city. The numbers are very impressive. Um, now for the report that is from Transformation. We want to first tell you that the program has achieved all of the substantial increases in levels at all areas of the MBE disparity study, which was construction, construction sub, professional services, non-professional services, goods and services. We are also in complete accomplishment with the goals of the original board that drafted the policy for the MWE program. We have successfully addressed those concerns and they are now part of the program inherently. I'd also like to point out that during the last month, we have worked with Mr. Canyon uh, consistently right up until about 4 o'clock this afternoon on our transition. The transition has gone very well. We have all spent many, many hours uh, helping Mr. Canyon and the new staff person look at what is needed to move forward to maintain the progress that Portsmouth has made. And again, um, I'm very proud of Portsmouth because you have the highest numbers in the state. We want to make sure that that trajectory continues and does not decline. So we have spent a lot of time over the last month looking at how to make sure we have a stable, consistent program. Uh, we've also spent a lot of time looking at final recommendations for you. And I'd just like to share a few of them because I think these are the ones that are very, very critical. One is the priority focus should continue to be on creating opportunities for MWBEs. When we do that, we create opportunities for everyone. The aspirational goals that you're currently using have got to be updated. That's a critical piece. The updated st on the study of the disparity study is now legally due. We need to address that in 2017. That's, that's a very, very serious uh, legal issue that we want to make sure doesn't slip somewhere. Uh, we'd like to make sure that con you consistently work with the advisory committee, and I think our two chairpersons who have volunteered did an excellent job uh, two weeks ago trying to get us uh, stabilized and ready for the new advisory council. And I'd like to make the board aware of the fact that currently we only have one person on the advisory board. So we really need to take immediate action. That advisory board looks at your RFPs before they go out for bid. They also evaluate the project goal. We don't want to see the end of the year spend get held up because we don't have enough people on that council in order to make uh, 
everything work, as Dr. Bracey has said, here are my priorities, you, can, you guys get it done. So we're looking forward to doing uh, a lot with that advisory council very quickly. And then to strive to maintain the recommendations in the disparity study. There were 18 original recommendations. At this point in time, we have accomplished about eight of those, which is a good way to, to, to be. But it means it's time to move forward with the rest of those recommendations. And I think you're in a very good position to do that. Uh, as a final report, we wanted to give you something that you could be very proud of. So we decided that we would do an anecdotal study with the contractors who have won contracts over the year with Portsmouth Public Schools. We did one-on-one -on -one interviews with them, and in your report tonight, you'll see something that looks like this, and it has the actual comments from people who have worked and gotten contracts from the school, and I'll just share very briefly with you that if you looked at these comments on a scale from one to 10, it's a 10 plus. One of our contractors has said, this has been the best program I've ever been a part of. Has been helpful to our business. We added a part-time person and would love to get more business so we can make them full-time. Wonderful relationship with the school system and we doubt that this program should continue. It has been a lifeblood for us. Another one of our contractors says, it's been good and very, very happy. It has led us to get business with other school systems, including Newport News, Hampton, and Chesapeake. I think the program, of course, should be continued. It's wonderful. Uh, the experience has been good with the school system. I use subcontractors for the work we do, which some are minority owned and some are not. I think this program should be continued. Good that we have awesome people to work with at the school system now. We're very happy with them. I have hired five new workers, and that was because I was able to get a contract with PPS, definitely continue the program. These comments are direct quotes from those who have benefited from this. We wanted you to have that because I know sometimes when you have to go out to your constituents and say, what's the purpose? Well, we wanted you to see that there's a real economic development impact to what you're doing. New hires, new subcontractors, new vendors, young people getting jobs in our city. So we hope that this is something that you'll use as you go out and talk to people. And I'd like to personally thank the board. It has been a wonderful opportunity to work with you and your predecessors. We've worked with three different boards over the course of the program, and we're very proud of all of you and what you've done. Thank you very much. Ms. Allen? Questions? No. Ms. Allen, your, your light was on. At, you have a question? No. Did you have a question? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Brazil, would you mind staying at the podium, please? You never do. You never know. <laughs> you never know. On behalf of the Portsmouth School Board, yeah. and I know that you, you and uh, Mr. Williams, Bruce, Bruce, where's Bruce? Yeah. There's Bruce. <laughs> have worked with us and have set this program. I mean, you're you're the reason why we have our report tonight and why we are been, why we've been so successful. Yeah. And on behalf of the school board, we would like to present a certificate of a certificate of acknowledgement presented to Transformation Consultant LLC, Richmond, Virginia, in recognition of the contractual agreement for professional services that existed between Transformation Consultant LLC and the Portsmouth City School Board, commencing on Wednesday, March 28, 2012, while and culminating on Tuesday, March 28, 20, 2017, it's signed by the chairman of the school board and the clerk of the board on Thursday, March 23rd. And it's my pleasure to present this plaque to you, and Ms. Williams has a token.
Okay. Are some of the things in the school oh, system. Thank, yes. you. thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for thank what you've you done. So Let me turn it around because she's trying to do a picture. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you to the board. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. And we shall strive to do even better. We'll You've got us you. ready That's to go. Right. go. <laughs> Okay, thank you. At this time, we will hear from our student representative report, Kayla Moore. Good evening. Good evening. Last week, I met with the school board chairman, vice chair, and superintendent to discuss a multitude of students' concerns. The main points were dress code, the tardy policy, and the offered school electives. I offered suggestions and solutions to which the board was very receptive. March 2nd was National Read Across America Day in which many volunteers, including myself, read to students across the nation. I chose to read to my former elementary school, Douglas Park. <clears throat> with, doing that, I met, with doing that, I met the president and vice president of their student council. Uh, afterwards, the students invited me to their next SCA meeting on April 19th in hopes I can offer helpful insight about student leadership. Along with my personal public school activity, I have been making my rounds in the community. For example, I have been asked to give greetings at the FAT Conference, which stands for Promoting Healthy Teens, Healthy Active Teens, as well as speak about my student, represent student representative duties. <laughs> Speaking of active teens, I'd like to personally congratulate the basketball team, Isaiah, and Kanaya on their accomplishments. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this time, we'll have the attendance. Uh, board members, please indicate your attendance by electronic vote. Madam Deputy Clerk, roll call vote. I mean, would you? Eight members present, one member absent. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Board members, what is your pleasure? Second. Motion's been made and second. Do we have any discussion? Hearing no discussion, board members, please indicate your preference by electronic vote. We're going to get there. That's all right. There we go. Madam De Deputy Clerk, what is the? Deputy it's Clerk, unanimous. Thank you. Our Deputy Clerk tonight is in training, and, and we appreciate you very much. And, I'm, and I've been advised by the clerk that I'm supposed to take it real easy and real slow so that everything goes well. All right. I'll do my very best. Thank you. At this time, we'll have the monthly report, curriculum, and instruction. And that will be by Dr. Michael Cromarty. Good evening. Good evening. A uh, fully detailed instructional report was included in your board packets, but we have two very special guests with us tonight for our presentations. First, from IC Norcom High School, I'm proud to introduce Mr. Ezekiel Matthews. Ezekiel is a 15 year old ninth grader at IC Norcom. He participates on the robotics team as well as the cybersecurity after school club. Ezekiel is the son of Corlissa and Joshua Matthews, and if we could have them stand to be recognized. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel is also accompanied tonight by his coach, Mr. Deron Moore. So if we could have Ezekiel come up at this time.
Hello, my name is Ezekiel Matthews, and I'm here today, today to tell you about my experience with the robotics team at IC Norcom High School. I am originally from Laramie, Wyoming. Since my father is in the military, I've lived in Georgia, South Carolina, Virginia, New York, and back here again. Unfortunately, none of the schools I attended in those states had a robotics program. In fact, the first robotics program that I participated in was in here, Portsmouth, Virginia. When I arrived at IC Norcom High School, one of the first classes I took was Principles of Technology. It was a class that taught the basics of VEX robotics and was a very good start in robotics. The class taught the basic drivetrain, basic control with radio crystals, basic gear ratios, and the design cycle to ensure productivity and effectiveness. When I first found out about the robotics team, I thought of it as a good opportunity because I knew that today we live in a technologically advanced society. Eventually I joined and started to learn things I did not learn in Principles of Technology 1, like the different types of lifts that would be efficient for the game field called Starstruck and the type of manipulators that would work as well. When I was prepared, I went to the VEX competitions and quickly learned that it was a competitive game that required dedication. Overall, it was a very fun and educational experience. In the future, I plan to stay with the robotics program so I can learn more about VEX robotics and hopefully go to state competitions and further. In the far future, I plan to join the Army to either become a logistician or an engineer. I think that the robotics program is, very, is a very important program because it can help students gain skills for the increasing demand for prestigiously educated engineers. Very good. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matthews. Our second student is from Woodrow Wilson High School. Joshua Woodworth is a senior at Wilson who likes robotics very much and feels that it's an interesting experience. He's joined, I'm sorry, he joined because he wanted to learn more about building and controlling machinery. In his spare time, he likes playing video games, drawing, and crafting. Joshua aspires to be either an electrical engineer or a computer software engineer. His parents are Susan and Charles Woodworth, and if you would please stand to be recognized. And Joshua is also accompanied by his coach this evening, Lawrence Douglas. Joshua, if you could come forward at this time, please. Good afternoon, members of the school board. My name, Good evening. I'm sorry. My name is Joshua Woodworth. I'm a senior from Woodrow Wilson High School. Uh, I saw you, I was participating in last year's VEX Robotics competition, and it's glad to see you all again. Um, I have, in case, well, I have been participating in the VEX Robotics competition for two years with Mr. Lawrence Douglas. Classes I have taken involving VEX Robotics is Principles of Technology 1. I've learned a lot about building robots, including gear ro ratios, some coding, and a little bit of welding from that time. By participating in the after-school VEX Robotics program, I have been able to I have been able to compete at many regional competitions, including last year's states and was able to collaborate with many other school districts. Participating in the VEX Robotics program has impacted me to decide in career choices in electrical engineering and computer software. On behalf of Mr. Douglas, uh, Mr. Moore, and all members of the VEX Robotics team, we thank you for your presence and your future support. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, again. 
I would just mention to the students that, um, and I probably probably will have to come up with some money to do this, but <clears throat> I would like for y'all to design a, like a, a, a little robot that would come and clean my house. Because <laughs> that's one of my responsibilities that my wife gave me when we first got married. We were both teachers. I had to vacuum the house. So that might be a good project that I can give you some money and you can, you can build one so I won't have to do it anymore. Right, Con congratulations. Thank you. Sounds like a good challenge, Mr. Chairman. Absolutely. Um, Ezekiel and Joshua represent the smart work that's being performed by all of our students, most of our students every day in all of our schools. So I'd like to again congratulate them for their work, hard work at IC Norcom High School and Woodrow Wilson, and also for their uh, persistence and stamina to be able to come up and present this board tonight. I know personally that that's not always an easy task, so bravo to them for that as well. Thank you. Wait a minute, Dr. Dr. Committee. Reverend Patello. Yeah, I just also want to state that um, I'm a big supporter of the robotics and, and vets programs and also the board, uh, we worked hard on the budget proposal for this year and within the proposal we did put increased funding for competition expenses uh, for the program. So uh, we're all rooting behind you and hopefully we can get that done this year. Thank, Thank you, you, good sir. Thank you. And Mrs. Hines. Thank you, Chairman. Ezekiel. You can't, have, you can't have a robot now. No, no, no. no. I have a six-year-old. He's learning how to use the vacuum okay, cleaner. Good. We're good. Right. <laughs> um, Ezekiel and Joshua, I wanted to say congratulations and thank you for being here to the coaches of all of our robotics students. I want to say thank you. I uh, went to the first robotics competition for the first time this past weekend. I have, I'm, I'm, I'm an old hat at the VEX Robotics, so mm -hmm. going to the first robotics co competition was a new thing. Um, but the dedication that those students put in and that those sponsors and that those teachers put in, I just want to say thank you for that yeah. because it was absolutely amazing to sit in the crowd with the team of parents and other students that were scouting other teams to see what was going on and, and taking notes. It truly is a team experience. So I wanted to thank especially you two for coming up, but for all your teammates and for all your coaches and all your sponsors, thank you for that. Please keep it up. I look forward to going to more competitions and wearing my purple band. I got my, my royal robotics band. It's at home tonight. It didn't go with the maroon shirt, but I, it's not that I don't love y'all anymore or any less. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you and keep up the good work, guys. Thank you. Mm. Mr. Lamb. Yes, thank you, Chairman, uh, Parent. And, and I, I don't know if you're aware, but just to let you know, they have created a machine. It's called a vacuum cleaner, but uh, kind of a thing. I've got one. Uh, but, you know, going off of what of Ms. Hines was saying, this, this past Saturday was uh, very, very um, fun uh, watching all of these students uh, compete, um, something I could have never never done uh, at that age group as well. Um, just some things that, that I found out over the weekend, and if my numbers are off, I'm sure, sure someone could correct me. But over the past two years since we've been hosting the event at Churchland High School, last year I believe our um, status, we finished something like 31 out of 39 teams. Uh, this Saturday, we finished 11th, I want to say, or 7th, 7th out of 31 teams, but in the district, which encompasses uh, Maryland, Virginia, and North Carolina, we're ranked 11th um, out of the area. So going That's into good. states, um, I'm, I'm real impressed. I was so proud of them. I mean, for something that uh, you think of science and math, you don't think much of a of a party, but right. if you were in there, you would have been at a Final Four, uh, looks like a basketball game, <laughs> with the excitement and energy that was in there. So kudos to them. I think it's a program that's worthwhile. Um, it teaches critical thinking skills and moves us forward. Good. Okay. The next item on the agenda, this is going to be a, uh, an area of presentations, and the first presentation is recon recognition of Kanaya Carey. Thank you, Chairman Parent. So before I get into the the bio, I mean, we can we want to have Kanaya come down now, Sharice, or 
All right, can I? We're gonna we're gonna show the video first, and then we'll have you come down. Like to dance. I do hip hop, ballet, jazz, tap. I'm a girly girl and a tomboy. I like to play basketball, and I like to hang out outside, and I love to play with my friends, and I like to get my nails done. I like right. to go to bed late. Why do you like to go to bed late? Because sleep is for party poopers. The first time I baked, we stayed up till 1 o'clock in the morning baking. I would like to be on the show because I want to save the money for culinary school. I want to open my own business and I want to buy more ingredients for my cupcakes. I own my own cupcake business. It's called Casey's Buttercream Sweet Shop. I do different types of cupcakes and different types of flavors. I don't need any help in the kitchen because I can do everything by myself. Oh. I'm an independent baker. When I make other people treats, it's like Jesus give me a hug. I'm a messy baker. I spill the sugar, I spill the milk, I drop the eggs. I have to clean it up. I have been taking cooking and baking classes for about three years now. The desserts I can make are cakes, cupcakes, cheesecake, lemon bars. I made pineapple upside down cake. When I grow up, I want to be a baker and a chef. If I won prize money on the show, I would buy my own business, more ingredients, and save the rest for culinary school. I would buy an Xbox 360. <laughs> Very good. Now, Kanaya, will you come down at this time, please? And if your parents are with you, they can come as well. So you saw the, the promo that the show used that Kanaya was on, just to give you a little background, that we're, we're definitely proud to celebrate our very own Baker and our Miss. Kanaya is a fifth grader at Churchland Primary and Intermediate School. Recently, she spent 10 weeks on the Food Network's hit show, Kids Bacon Championship. She was the only local contestant. Kanaya finished among the top three contestants on the show. Even though she wasn't crowned champion, I am proud of Kanaya because she worked hard. She was the life of the show. She also displayed good character. When another boy was announced as the winner, she hugged him and congratulated him. During her 10 weeks on the show, Kanaya baked carnival-themed carnival cupcakes, volcano bunt cakes, eclairs, and other sweet treats. On the Superhero grand finale, Kanai performed a lemon blueberry rosemary cake called Catast Catastrophe Girl. <laughs> she could often be seen helping and encouraging fellow contestants. We're so proud of Kanaya, and we know she will continue baking more tasty treats for years to come. So Kanaya, we're very proud of you. Um, after you won, we and I came out and presented you with a bouquet of flowers. I sent a tweet out and I tagged Duff in it, and he said to me, he said, Dr. Bracey, I'm glad you're recognizing her because that is a special little human. So, and we realized that, you know, I wasn't, you know, I, I was late getting into the show, and I'll be honest with you now, Reverend Patello would, would send out uh, messages, hey, make sure you watch Kanaya. Mm -hmm. So once I, once I started watching that, I mean, I got hooked on it, and I think I shared with you that day, you know, I stopped watching the basketball games to, to tune in and watch you. I, I mean, I really enjoyed it. And you represented us well, and we want to thank you for that. So I'll come down with, along with the chair and vice chair to give you a special token.
This is a, <coughs> excuse me, a certificate of recognition presented to Kanaya K. Carey, fifth grader, Churchland Primary and Intermediate School, for being among the top three contestants on the Food Network's Kids Baking Championship show. Having spent 10 weeks baking an assortment of delightful treats and for her good competitive character and positive energy and for representing Portsmouth Public Schools well on national television. This is signed by the chairman of the school board and the superintendent of schools and it's dated Thursday, March 23rd, 2017. Congratulations. And I want a cupcake. Ms. Atkinson. Test. Okay, there we go. Thank you, Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> Kanaya, I just want to say that regardless of you winning on Food Network, you're a star in our eyes, and you really put Portsmouth P-Town on the map. Um, with being on Food Network, and as I was walking in, I just knew it was going to be some pumpkin spice bites for all the school <laughs> board members here. Uh, I just want to let everybody know, please support her. Her baked goods are, are very good. I, I brought them a couple of times and, and bring the attention to any donors um, that Kanaya has a GoFundMe page um, where she's trying to open up her own uh, bake shop. So if you can, uh, go to her GoFundMe page and, and make a donation as well as support her baked goods. And congratulations again, Kanaya, proud of you. Thank you. Mr. Lamb. Thank you, Chairman Bridgeford. Uh, Ms. Kanaya Carey. You retired. Yeah, I did that, didn't you I? You did. Mr. Parent. That's all right. That's for the vacuum <laughs> comment. Uh, Ms. Uh, I'll always be Chairman. Kanaya Carey, uh, you know, you came up here and, and I could just tell the energy and, and, and so forth that you have even here. The thing about it is it was mentioned about being a champion. You know, sometimes the world says that, that being a champion is always finishing first or, or always being the quote, quote, best. But to be honest with you, being a champion is actually finishing well. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what you did. So make no mistake about it. Uh, what you've done with your young life so far Continue with it. Have that drive, and you are already a champion. Thank you. Reverend Patella. I also want to say uh, congratulations to Kanaya also. I'm great friends with Chef Deidre, and she's so proud of you and speak so highly of you. And along with Ms. Axon, I want to take it a bit farther. I would love to see you uh, get your business started have you a business license and be added to our MWB vendor list. There you go. So when our schools have parties and they need cupcakes, you know, it would be good to have her considered mm -hmm. to bake cupcakes for these parties since we have to pay someone. You know, we might as well consider our own. Mm -hmm. Is that right? So make sure you, you see that man two rows ahead of you, Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Tony Canyon. Raise your hand, Mr. Canyon. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he'll tell you exactly what you need to do to get yourself established to be on our vendor list. Right, you thank you. Dr. Price. And one last thing to um, the, the parents. We know you're proud, but we want to thank you for allowing uh, Sharice Newsom to come to your house for your own watch party for the championship and allowing her to do a, was it Facebook Live um, at the time? So we were able to keep everyone informed. So we appreciate you opening up your homes to let us come in to, to broadcast such a special event. And I want to say thank you again. Okay. At this time, we'll have the recognition of Isaiah Haru, Dr. Bracey. 
Yes. If Isaiah and her parents will come forward. Now, I'm coming down there in a second, Isaiah, but I want to, let me read a little information. Isaiah was named the fastest nine-year-old girl in the nation. Good. Right. Woo! Yeah. Good. And she's our very own from Portsmouth. Wow. Now, when I, when I saw that, I think um, your principal, Ms. Lewis, had took a picture of you and posted it, and I saw that. It didn't really sink in at the moment. So when I went back and looked at it again, it said the fastest nine-year-old in the nation. Wow. So that means of all nine-year-olds mm -hmm. across the world, you are the fastest. Mm -hmm. And you're right here before me with all those medals hanging around your neck. Oh, but she's a third grade, third grade honor roll student from John Tyler Elementary, who was named the fastest nine-year-old girl in the nation after competing against hundreds of top girls in Landover, Maryland. She earned a gold medal at the AAU National Indoor Championship Games. She runs for the Virginia Seminoles Track Club, which is made up of students across the Hampton Roads. She's also a 2017 National 60 Meter Champion with a winning time of 9.1. 9.1 seconds, that is. She placed third in the 200 meter race with a time of 31.2 seconds. Her dream is to break the 100 meter Olympic record set by Florence Griffin Joyner, Flojo, wow. in 1988. She's now preparing for the outdoor track training with her father five days a week. And we want to congratulate you. And let's give her a round of applause. Now, I always tell the story when it's appropriate. Now, I was a former track athlete. I went to college and I ran track. So I'm looking at your times as a nine-year-old, and I'm thinking about the times that I was running in, in, let's say, middle school, and I'm not gonna tell you how close you are <laughs> to what I was running then, but this is, uh, for those of you that don't know anything about track now, the times that she's running is amazing mm -hmm. for that age. So I can only imagine the next three, four years what you're going to be doing. And we know, I don't know which high school you're zoned for, but you know, we just put a, a, a wall up for LaShawn Merritt at Wilson. So when you get your Olympic gold medals, mm -hmm. we're going we're gonna to put one up for you that exceeds what we did for him. <laughs> okay? All right. What an honor to stand by an Olympian. Can't wait for that. Beautiful. Congratulations. This is a certificate of recognition presented to Isaiah Lachey Haru, third grade honor roll student, John Tyler Elementary School. As an acknowledgement of her being named the fastest nine-year-old girl in the nation, having competed successfully against hundreds of the top girls in Landover, Maryland, and in recognition of having her earned the gold medal at the AAU National Indoor Championship game. This is signed by the chairman of the school board and the superintendent of schools, dated Thursday, March the 23rd, 2017. My congratulations, and I look forward to the Olympics <laughs> when you compete, and I know you're going to win. That's great. I know, Dad, you're very proud. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Oh.
So uh, I have my picture with, with Kanaya, who will be a famous baker one day. So right. I wanted to get the picture with Isaiah, a future Olympian, so that I could pull it up years later and say, I knew her when she was uh, nine years old, and I knew that great things were going to happen. So I'm set. I've got pictures of two wonderful rising stars right here in our own city. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Ms. Ackerson? Thank you, Chairman. I just want to say congratulations, Asaya. I mean, we have history um, right now in Portsmouth Public Schools. Where is the news? I mean, we have yeah. so many uh, future athletes in the building. But I want to go further and say I know we did uh, for LaShawn and Wilson. Why can't we do a box in uh, John Tyler uh, for Asaya? Just a little small that's box. A good, that's a great idea. If it's the consensus of the board to do something for her, yeah. because I mean, she is the fastest yeah. <laughs> nine year old. So if we can do something for her, like and, a shadow and, box, or like a like shadow that. box in yeah. John Tyler, um, like I said, it's up to the school board. But Mr. Wiggins, you're the you're the you're the. I mean, you can do it. You can <laughs> the board challenges you. You can do it. Mr. Lamb, get it right now. Thank you, Chairman Parent. You got it. Um, and I, I say this, uh, Ms. Zaya Haru, I, I say this with utmost respect. Um, as a formal uh, track person myself, um, um, I, I'm looking at you and, I, and I'm thinking, I don't think I would even want to race you now. Uh, much maybe Dr. Bracy, but but I, that's what I'm saying. Uh, I, congratulations! Um, I, wow, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just blown away with it. So um, keep it up, keep doing what you're doing. You've got a great future. Um, doors are going to be open to you uh, to do some amazing things. Keep focused. Thank you. All right. This next one is recognition of the 2017-18 IC Norcom High School Boys Varsity Basketball Team. Yes, we will ask the basketball team to come forward and we'll come down and make some, some presentations. And we're very proud of you guys for that four-peat. And we, we put the pressure on you last year when you came through. I want y'all to know that we, we came dressed just for you. You like the shirt too? Yes, if Dr. Foster and any administrators from Coach Jackson, athletic director, if you all will join the team, please. Resolution of commendation, whereas the IC Norcom High School boys varsity basketball team has won six state titles in the past eight seasons, and whereas the team has earned the coveted title of becoming the first to win four consecutive Virginia High School League state championships, and whereas the mighty Greyhounds winning basketball team 
has brought honorable recognition to itself, the school, the school division, the historic seaport city of Portsmouth, and the greater Southampton Roads community. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Portsmouth City School Board extend its heartfelt appreciation and the enormous gratitude of the Portsmouth citizenry to the team on its stellar accomplishment during the 2016-17 academic session. And be it further resolved that the Portsmouth City School Board commend Coach Leon F. Goosby, Jr. and his assistants for their collective roles in helping our young male athletes capture the Group 3A State Basketball Championship game held on Friday, March 10th, 2017 at Virginia Commonwealth University's Siegel Center in Richmond, Virginia. And be it finally resolved that a copy of this document be made a part of the school board's permanent records and that a framed copy be formally presented to the coach and the building principal at the board's regular monthly meeting scheduled for Thursday, March 23rd, 2017. <laughs> At this time, we will ask Coach Goosby to come and give us a few words. <laughs> And one thing I don't want to get lost in this, of course, we're celebrating the, the 4 P, but also that night they were also given the Sportsmanship Award for Group 3A. <laughs> Chairman Parent, Vice Chair Williams, Dr. Bracey, and the school board members, on behalf of the Dr. Foster, his administration staff, uh, athletic, direction, athletic Director Jackson, and the members of the uh, basketball team and my coaching staff, we'd like to say thank you for this recognition. Uh, when you try to get 15 guys to climb one mountain to get to the top, sometimes you know you have little setbacks. You know you got people that try to go their own individual direction, but they came together at the right time to climb that mountain and put our flag on top to make history that everybody in the city is part of. So this is not only our celebration, it's everybody in the city's celebration, and we'd like to thank y'all for y'all support. And I'd like to thank my parents. If y'all would please stand, the parents of my players, and like to say thank them <laughs> for trusting me with their kids. And if there are any alumni from IC Nokum High School, please stand also. And alumni, thank you, Mark. I say thank you for your support. Hey, you know, this is, has been a magnificent, uh, a great journey. And to the guys, it's, this lets you know that if you really, really want to accomplish something, no matter what's in your way, you can do it. It just takes hard work and dedication for you to stay focused. And again, we'd like to say thank you.
At this time, we'll have the recognition of the School Partnership Awards. Dr. Bracey. All right, if you take a look at the, the PowerPoint up here, that's Mr. Wiggins. At this time, we're going to recognize some community partners. As you all remember, at the beginning of the year, one of the goals that I set was the community involvement, community engagement, and these are some of our community partners that have been working with the school division that we want to recognize tonight and thank them for their efforts. And Mr. Parent is going to come and read one of the plaques, and the same information is on all of them so that you'll know what we're presenting. Portsmouth City School Board, Portsmouth, Virginia, School Partnership Recognition Award presented to the Jazz Legacy Foundation. It reads, in special recognition of the organization's sound investment and in its continuing commitment to the young people of the Portsmouth Public School Division, and in grateful appreciation of the group's solid devotion to our children's future well-being manifested by its invaluable contribution to the overall advancement of public education here in the city of Portsmouth. It's signed by the chairman of the school board, the vice chair of the school board, and the superintendent. The theme engaging community, community support to enhance student performance, and it's signed Thursday, March 23, 2017. Would the representatives for the Jazz Legacy Foundation come forward, please, to, to receive this? The next group we would like to recognize is the Portsmouth chapter of the Lynx Incorporated. And, and Dr. Felton is going to accept. And I'll, and I'll have a, I also have another link that will present it okay. to. This is the Portsmouth chapter of Lynx. Uh, we have partnered with the school system for the past 20 years doing the budding young, budding young artists con contest. And I think we've given out more than $10,000 in prize awards. And we also do the Ebony and Ivory piano lessons in the schools at John Tyler. We've been doing that for the past four or five years. And we have readers, readers that go throughout our school. So thank you, um, uh, Portsmouth Public Schools, for allowing us to partner with you and Dr. Felton. We present this to the Portsmouth Chapter of Lynx Incorporated. Thank you. with representatives from the Portsmouth Community Concerts. Former board member. Can I do that? You can. Yeah. Well, there you go. Could I introduce these people you, who absolutely, are with me? Absolutely. Please do. Um, I'd like to introduce to you um, Amelia Ross Hammond, who is the president of the Community Cons of the Young Audiences Board, and our new executive officer, Chris Eberly, 
She has been with us just a little over a month, and we're so glad to welcome her to our, to our organization and to the community. Well, since Mr. Perrin already called you up here, I might as well go ahead and give you your recognition now for the young audiences of Virginia. What I would like to say is that I thank the board for continuing to fund the money for this because this started when David Stuckwish was superintendent and I did not coerce him to do it though I was on the board. <laughs> I really didn't. He surprised me when I looked at the budget and saw the money in there for young audiences. I said, when did you do this and how did you do this? And he said, to surprise you. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, it is with gratitude that I say to this board and to Dr. Bracey, we thank you for this continuation of good money for good purpose. Thank you. Next, we'll be recognizing the Richmond Ballet. So we have representatives at this time. Would rep representatives for the Virginia Arts Festival. Okay, they're not here tonight and we will be sure that they receive this award. Representatives for the Virginia Symphony Orchestra, if you Present, will you please come forward? They're not here, but we'll accept this on their behalf and thank them for what they do for our school division. This time we'll have the school's attendance report, February 2017. Dr. Bracey? Yes, I would like to call on Mr. Wiggins at this time to give the attendance report. I was simply I'd like to remind you that we're always one month behind. We're pleased to report the attendance for February 2017. And it's, if you look at the um, slide, you will see that we try to point out the various activities that are going on within the school division. We move first to our preschools. When we look at it one year ago in 2016, it was 90.74%. And for the current year, 91.25%. And from the previous year to the current year, it went up 51 hundredths of a percentage point. We next look at uh, the first and second place winners. Churchland Preschool came in first place with 91.73%, and Emily Spong Preschool came in second place with 91.17%. And when you look at the difference between, the difference separating the first and second place winners, it's 56 
uh, one hundredths of a percentage point. Uh, we did not require the principals to attend because there are a lot of PTA meetings and other activities, uh, but uh, we still want to acknowledge them. We move next to our elementary schools. For the previous year, it was 95.18%, and for the current year, 93.84%, and we had a slight dip of 1.34%. Taking first place honors once again, and I know the assistant principal, Mr. Brian Liverman, is here. Uh, they are having an activity at the school, but the principal dispatched him here. Uh, taking first place honors once again is Churchland Primary with 95.11%, and coming in second place is Churchland Elementary with 95.01%. And when you look at it, the difference separating the first and second place winners is one-tenth of a percentage point. Uh, Mr. Liverman reminded me that since the banner was already there, the principal refused to let him bring it down. So <laughs> I didn't have a problem with that. Hmm. We move next to our middle schools. Uh, for 2016, it was 93.39%, and for the current year, 92.18%. Uh, and again, there was a dip of one and 21 hundredths uh, of a percentage point. Uh, taking first place honors is William E. Waters Middle School with 92.22%. And coming in second place is Churchland Middle with 92.17%. And here, the difference separating the first and second place winners is five one hundredths of a percentage point. We move next to our high schools. For 2016, it was 92.25%, and for the current year, 89.39%. And here, the difference, uh, it dropped by 2.86 um, percentage points. Once again, Churchland High School took first place honors with 93.55%, and coming in second place is Woodrow Wilson High School. Um, here you will see the largest difference between the first and second place winners, uh, and in this particular case, it's four and one one hundredths of a, per, of, of a percentage points. When we look at the school division, for 2016, it was 93.79%, and for the current year, 92.59%. And the difference is uh, it went dropped by 1 uh, and 20 percentage points. The next slide merely shows a summation uh, for the four divisions, our preschools, the elementary schools, our middle schools, our high schools, and then for our school division overall. And uh, Dr. Bracey wants me to <clears throat> extend our appreciation to everyone involved, involved in all important tasks of getting students to and from the schools. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Wiggins, you might as well stand, stay oh. up there because okay. our next items will be resolution. The first resolution is Public School Volunteer Appreciation Week, April the 17th through the 21st, 2017. Well, Mr. Parent, I may have to slip back because... Uh, <laughs> Would you like my copy? Okay. There you go. And you might as well... You want the other one? <laughs> All right. Okay. So we're always prepared. Yes, sir. <laughs> Resolution. Whereas our school volu volunteers mm -hmm. right. and our paid partners in education are great mainstays in helping us achieve and maintain our shared goal of making the public schools of Portsmouth the very best that there are. And whereas they generously share their outstanding talents and unique abilities in the schools and are making lasting contributions to the education of the young people of our great city our great commonwealth and our great nation. And whereas on a daily basis, concerned citizens continue to augment the efforts 
of school personnel by contributing freely of their time, talents, and resources to advance the cause of public education here in our fair city. And whereas their diligence and their exemplary service can ever be a model for all who aspire to contribute to the common will, now therefore be it resolved that the Portsmouth City School Board extend its heartfelt appreciation and the enormous gratitude of the citizen of Portsmouth to all volunteers and partners in education for their perseverance, their zeal, and their many hours of endeavor rendered on behalf of the youth of this historic seaport city. And be it further resolved that all school division personnel be encouraged to observe public school volunteer week during the period April 17th through 21st, 2017, as a tangible means of demonstrating our profound gratitude to this fine group of individuals and organizations for their invaluable contribution. And be it finally resolved that this resolution be made a part of the board's official minutes and that a properly executed copy be sent to all schools and administrative offices throughout the division. What is the board's pleasure? Move for approval. Second. Second. Motion's been made and second. Any discussion? <coughs> Hearing no discussion. Board members, please indicate your preference by electronic vote. There we go. Madam Deputy Clerk. Eight, yes. Thank you. It's unanimous. Thank you. All right, Mr. Wiggins, the next one is the Resolution School Library Media Center Appreciation Month. And in recognition for School Library Media Center Month, we have uh, Dee Hensley, who's a library media specialist from Douglas Park Elementary School, who will be receiving this. Oh, great. And Ms. Hensley began her career teaching in North Carolina in 1984. She's been an employee of Portsmouth Public Schools since 1992. She was a classroom teacher at Port Norfolk Elementary and then became a library media specialist in 2006. She received her master's in educational technology library science from Indiana State University in 2007 and a second master's in degree in supervision and administration from the University of Scranton in 2012. Ms. Hensley enjoys traveling, reading, and cooking. She has her own library which houses a collection of over 5,346 books. 2,313 is a collection of cookbooks, which her late husband started for her when they met. She definitely has a love for books. Having current books is important to the Library Media Center, and children get excited when they see new books added to the collection. Ms. Hensley has worked with Portsmouth Public Schools grant writer to help locate and write grants to get updated library books in the Library Media Center. She has received three grants to help improve the collection at Douglas Park Elementary. Okay. Don't forget. Resolution. Whereas school libraries and media centers are the foundation of our culture, not luxuries. And whereas the Portsmouth Public School Division's libraries and media centers are great mainstays in the national discourse on intellectual freedom, equity of access, and narrowing the digital divide. And whereas today's school libraries and media centers are making a significant difference in the lives of the American citizenry. And whereas librarians and media specialists provide appropriate opportunities so that school personnel and local community residents can become conversant with the essential role that our strong school library program plays in a student's education and career choices. And whereas the American Association of School Librarians has designated April 2017 as School Library Month and has selected because school libraries empower students as the theme for this year's observance, marking the 32nd anniversary of School Library Month. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Portsmouth City School Board endorse the celebration of School Library Month as an opportunity to reinforce the fundamental purposes and practices of school librarians and media specialists, and that teachers, students, parents, and all citizens be encouraged to participate in this special recognition. 
and be it further resolved that this resolution be made a part of the school board's permanent records and that copies be sent to all schools and administrative offices within the division and be it finally resolved that a copy of this document be formally presented to a school-based practitioner at the school board's regular monthly meeting scheduled for Thursday, March 23rd, 2017. Approval. I was getting ready to say, what is the board's exactly. pressure? Move for approval. All There's right. a second. Any discussion? Second. Hearing no discussion. Board members, please indicate your preference by electronic vote. Here we go. Deputy Clerk, what is the? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Moving on to our next item, or minutes, we have the minutes of February the 9th, 2017, and February the 23rd, 2017. What is the board's pleasure? Move for approval. Motion has been made and second. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, board members, please indicate your preference by electronic vote. Madam Deputy Clerk. It's unanimous. Thank you. At this time, we will have none agenda item speakers. Madam Deputy Clerk, do we have any speakers? Yes, sir, we do. Thank you. The Portsmouth City School Board is always interested in hearing from the citizens of its community. If you have registered to speak prior to this meeting, the clerk will call your name when it's, it's your turn to address the school board. If you have not registered prior to the <coughs> meeting, you may be given an opportunity to speak by the chairman after the first group has been called by the clerk. When speaking, please keep your comments focused on issues that are of general interest to the school division and the community. This public comment period is for non-agenda items only. Due to the length of our meeting, the school board requires that you keep your comments to five minutes. An additional few minutes may be granted by the chairman. Mrs. Brenda Joseph. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, first, I want to talk about this letter that the principal sent home this week. I won't read it because I forgot my glasses. But it talks about uh, the children, some children are going in there stopping up the toilets with too much toilet paper and paper towels. They're going to the bathroom on the floor and spreading it all over the floor and the mirrors and things, which is unhealthy. They're messing up 30, over 30 keyboards and they're stealing lunches from other children. So why is not somebody watching them? Because today I went up there at 11 o'clock and it was a little boy about second grade rolling around about 10 feet from the door and another little boy was trying to tell him to get up and go to class. And when I walked in, I told the assistant principal and he said, I know it. Now, if that would have been the seven-year-old child that I'm having trouble with at school, I would have got a phone call and said, come get her. Now, I have, uh, my child's been put off the bus for five days. She goes back on tomorrow. I used to drive a bus. I wonder what bus driver in this city that hasn't had to take a child to school crying and screaming that wanted to stay home. I have. So she got five days because she wouldn't get off the bus. Because some boy at school was picking on her, which they haven't solved that problem yet. I've had it with the principal. Matter of fact, I'm suing the principal at Churchman Primary because she has been nothing but harassing me ever since I went over her head and went to Dr. Bracey and had this child put back in sixth grade, this other child. Uh, something needs to be done. Point of order on that. <laughs> yes. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, we, we need to refrain from using. Uh, I didn't use her name. I know. Uh, I wish I could, but I can't. Okay. Uh, 
In Forest, the buses, last August, I reported a bus on August the 4th. I know what day it was, because that's the day my daddy died 31 years ago. Mm. She was in Kroger shopping. And when I called transportation, I was told she was on a field trip. Well, when did they go on a field trip to Kroger's at Suffolk yeah. when she said the field trip was across the street, she just parked in the parking lot? I don't think Fulton Public School is taking children to private homes for a field trip. And then every morning at 7-Eleven, you can find four or five buses. Why are they wasting my taxpayers' money to drive to 7-Eleven to go in there and shop? When I drove a bus, you couldn't leave school property. But something he's done, I want a conference about this. And I called down here and talked to the secretary of Dr. Bracey. And I also emailed him twice this week and I haven't heard nothing from him. It's time that somebody, I cannot talk to the principal. And they said, that's the one I have to talk to. Well, somebody needs to change it where I can talk to the assistant principal or somebody else and get this matter solved. Cause I'm not gonna have this. They're going to stop picking on me and my child. So. Thank you, Ms. Joseph. Madam De Deputy Clerk, next speaker. Ms. Barbara Edwards. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Superintendent Bracey, members of the school board. I'm new in town. I've been here about a year. I'm the grandparent of two students in the Portsmouth Public Schools. I'm a proud supporter of public schooling. And I'm representing tonight Virginia Organizing. And we would like to thank Dr. Bracey for the town hall that he did for us last week. It was well attended. The topics were exactly what we needed to hear about, and we want to thank you for making us, as you said that night, part of the process. We want to, we want to be in on the improvements to the school, to your relationships with the, the students, and particularly the school suspensions, which is our focus. On a personal note, I'd like to say thank you for removing the obstacles for volunteers. I've been trying to become a volunteer at West Haven Elementary since last fall, and I was able to start two weeks ago. I was given run of the place, as you might say. Um, I'm allowed to go anywhere and help wherever I want to. I've been sticking to the second grades because I have a seven-year-old. And I'm going to tell you, y'all don't pay those teachers enough. I invite you all to spend a full day with a bunch of second graders. But your teachers are fabulous. Your teachers are fabulous. Thank you for all you're doing. We look forward to working with you on the code of conduct. We think that's a key element in going forward with school discipline. And thank you all so much for the work that you're doing. Thank you, Madam Deputy Clerk, if there are any other additional speakers, you may request permission to speak from the board at this time. Moving on to public comment board agenda items. Do we have any speakers for the board agenda items? Microphone. Oh, thank you. Do we have any speakers for the board agenda items? No. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Moving around. Along uh, the Human Resources Operations Report, uh, Mr. Ziegler. Good evening, Chairman Parent, Vice Chairman Williams. Uh, I know you all have had a chance to read my report. I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have this evening. If there are no questions, I would ask the board to consider the transaction report as presented. Okay. Board members, you, you have received and reviewed the employee transaction report for March 2017. What is the board's pleasure? Move for approval. Motion's second. been made and second. Any discussion? If not, board members, please indicate your preference by electronic vote. <clears throat> 
Madam Deputy Clerk. It's unanimous. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the financial public budget but public financial budget report February 27th. Mrs. Dorch. Good evening. Good evening. Um, the report has been provided, and I'm here to answer any questions that there may be. Move for approval. Second. Motion's been made, and there's a second. Any discussion? Hearing no, no discussion, board members, please indicate your preference. Electronic vote. Madam Deputy Clerk. It's unanimous. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is of <clears throat> discipline case number 2016-17 slash 31. The recommendation is expulsion. What is the board's pleasure? Move for approval. Second. Motion's been made and second. Any discussion? Hearing no discussion, board members indicate your preference by electronic vote. Madam Deputy Clerk. Thank you. Seven yes and one abstinence. Thank you very much. One abstention, I'm sorry. Okay. The next item on the agenda is the superintendent's monthly report. Dr. Bracey. Thank you, Chairman. Parent, you have the, my report before you uh, for the sake of time. I would like to say that I think, I think this uh, meeting was a very special meeting because we got the chance to recognize our most valuable citizens, and that's our students. We had so many wonderful recognitions this evening, and this was a goal that the board set a few months ago that we wanted to make sure that we kept the focus on our children. So we're moving in, in that direction and try to be more, uh, I guess, formal in a business sense and take an active role in rep recognizing our, our students. I would like to mention that we do have our uh, reminder for our annual STEM Day event that will be at Woodrow Wilson High School Saturday, March 25th at, at 9 a.m. And also, Mrs. Hines mentioned and Mr. Lamb, I was going to uh, also echo, it was a wonderful robotics competition with the first. Uh, I had an opportunity to attend last year, but this year I stayed both days. It was uh, very exciting, as they mentioned. And I have some numbers that I'll share with you later that one of the organizers sent. As for, I think we had uh, over a two day period, about 4,500 people um, in attendance. So that was really great. And I definitely want to wish our students luck as they move forward um, for the state competition. So that's all I have. And just a reminder April 10th through the 14th, the the administrative offices and schools will be closed for our spring break. Okay. Counting down the days for that one. I'm sure you are. <laughs> Before I ask the superintendent to um, present the school board's proposed operating budget for 2017-18, I would like to read and clarify to the audience and to those that are viewing this by uh, television. School board members, this was prepared by Dr. Bracey and myself. I'd like to, the opportunity to clarify misinformation regarding the school division's budget process. Contrary to information shared at a recent city council meeting, we are on schedule with our budget and have provided more detailed information this year than ever before. The superintendent's needs based on proposed budget uh, in 2016, it was presented March the 10th, uh, 2016, and then in uh, 17, it was presented uh, to the city manager this uh, February the 9th. The proposed budget book in 14 was done uh, March 21st, 2014, in 15, it was done March 27th, and then uh, in in 16, it was done 
March 10th, and this year, uh, tonight after budget's proposed, uh, it's March 24th. The final uh, budget book uh, for 14 was done in May, in 15 it was done in May, and in 16 it was done in May, and in 17 it will be done in May. I also like to point out that, there, that we are ahead of the deadline required by state law, which is April the 1st. We've always been in compliance with this law. Our CFO and I have, and Dr. Bracey, we have worked together and implemented changes in the budget process this year to make it more transparent. For example, we conducted school and departmental budget meetings, developed detailed staffing projections, and produced a statement of needs. It is important to share this information with you tonight and those of you that are watching uh, this broadcast. Uh, I hope this message provides clarity around our budget. Our, our board is very transparent. We have a budget uh, timeline with a list of dates. We have followed those time, timelines and that um, contrary to information that has been shared with City Council, uh, we are on schedule. I wanted to make sure that that is clarified before the superintendent uh, gives his report. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. The next item, we will ask for the board's approval on the proposed operating budget for fiscal year 2017-18. You've had an opportunity to review the budget. Uh, what is the board's pleasure? Move for approval. Second. Second. Motion's been made and second. Do we have any discussion? Reverend Patello. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just want to state that I'm, I'm pleased with the budget uh, that we are presenting, uh, not stating that it is uh, adequate funding for the division, but I'm pleased that we were able to submit a budget to city council that includes a 2% raise uh, for our teachers right. and employees, and also for the hiring of additional instructional assistants uh, and other items that, that were given to us uh, by principals and by departments um, as needs. So uh, right. as a board, uh, we came together to make sure we address the needs of our teachers um, according to what they gave us, and right. we submitted it down to city council hoping for approval. Right. Thank you. Do we have any, do I, seeing no lights, board members, please indicate your preference by electronic vote. Madam Deputy Clerk. Five, yes, three, no. Thank you. <clears throat> I would say, and I'm not pointing out any any of those that any of, of you that voted against it. I think the bottom line is that you know, as a as elected officials, um, we have the responsibility uh, for passing a budget, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, we don't always receive what we want. And uh, I would like to have the $9 million that we had projected, uh, but we are projecting an additional $5.4 million. But this budget is a budget that um, I am very, we are very proud of, and uh, I hope that the City Council will take in consideration the needs of this school division, because that's what we're doing. We are providing a budget for the needs of the school system and for our teachers, our students, and uh, I'm, we're very proud of this. So. Although it wasn't a unanimous vote, it is a vote that we're sending this budget to City Council for approval. Thank you, Dr. Bracey. All right, at this time, do we have any board members' comments and concerns? Uh, Ms. Hines. Thank you, Chairman, Parent. There Make you go. sure we got it. You got um, it. I just want to, again, I want to talk about the first robotics competition. We've, we've talked about that. That's a wonderful event. I also wanted to say thank you uh, to Mr. Ziegler, his staff, to uh, finance, to Dr. Bracey and his team for a wonderful, excuse me, 
Teacher of the Year event last night. Yeah, there were several right. of us there. Yeah. Um, congratulations to Miss Albin from Norcom High School, who's the Teacher of the Year for us. Uh, Reverend Patillo was the host with the most, and I'm not going to say the host uh -huh. with them, but it was the host with the most, and it was wonderfully put together. I want to thank everybody for the energy in the room and for the time and the effort that went into it. So thank you. Thank you. Ms. Atkinson? I just want to um, say thank you to <laughs> Clever Communities in Action. Uh, the executive director is Star Armstrong. Uh, she donated about 100 uh, culturally inclusive books to uh, the Douglas Park Elementary School. Um, so I, I just want to say thank you to her and her organization for even considering uh, Portsmouth Public Schools as one of the recipients. And I would like to invite everyone to the annual Authors Luncheon this Saturday, March 25th at yes. noon at Roger Brown's Restaurant. Right. Um, so if you're free, please come out and attend. Thank you. The next item and the final item, item is adjournment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Move for adjourn. Second. Motion's been made and second that we adjourn. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you and thank everyone for coming.